This is a high pressure sodium lamp. These were invented in a laboratory and demonstrated in 1959. There's a mixture of neon and argon with solid sodium inside of a sintered aluminum oxide tube. That's that white ceramic. Tungsten electrodes and a tin getter are attached to the rods on stainless steel mounts made of a high cobalt steel with a very high melting point inside of a fused quartz bulb. This is an E26 screw base socket, 70 watt high pressure sodium lamp during the cold start procedure. What's happening here is that 56 volts of alternating current um, are flowing through the aluminum oxide tube from one electrode to the other producing an arc very similar to a welding arc and that's boiling the sodium vapor and what we're seeing here is the 589 nanometer uh, almost monochromatic light emissions though this is much better than low pressure sodium uh, though it doesn't last as long and it's not as energy efficient this unit for example produces 4000 lumens of light output uh, on 70 watts of electrical input, when in reality the transformer with starter uses more like 78 watts of power, resulting in a luminous efficiency of about 53 lumens per watt. So most modern LEDs are more energy efficient than this one. What I particularly like about it is the orange color. Now, if you know me in real life, bright green, yellow lime green, and orange, um, Jägermeister livery orange, or what Mazda called the sunburst orange on the Miata. Orange, bright, vivid neon orange, and bright neon lime green are my favorite colors. I can't tell you why. I don't understand why I like them. I just like vivid, bright colors. Well, this technology has an ultra-long life. So this lamp is rated at 20,000 hours, and the magnetic transformer with integrated starter is rated for 3,500 strikes or starts and over 100,000 hours of operation. So General Electric is the one that demonstrated this technology and they improved it with a magnesium oxide tubing by 1962 but the difficulty was sealing the tubes and the necessary electrodes to the fused quartz. So the end caps can get to 800 centigrade or 1470 Fahrenheit and then they cool to room temperature when the lamp is turned off, so the tubes had to be sealed to tolerate the repeated hot-cold cycling. The problem was solved by someone named Michael Arndash at the GE Nella Park plant, and the, the first commercial high-pressure sodium lamps were available in 1965 in the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Netherlands. The 400-watt lamp produces around 100 lumens per watt, so as you scale from 70 watts to 100, 200, 250, 400, 600, and 1,000 watts, better luminous efficiency is obtained because the volume of uh, reactant gas mixture or inert gas mixture to the electrode surface area improves and kind of hits a sweet spot around 400 watts. Um, some high pressure sodium systems can get as high as 157 lumens per watt as of 2024. Most commercial systems are around 100 lumens per watt. As you scale down to 70 watts, 50 watts, 35 watts, 18 watts, 12 watts, and 7 watts in very specialized application, the energy efficiency actually decreases. Um, this is a, a common phenomenon. That's why insects don't breathe with lungs. They can't they wouldn't be able to inhale and exhale fast enough so they breathe through their skin. Well, the same phenomenon with chemical energy density. So when passing an electric arc through an alumina, centered alumina tube, um, there is superior electrical to photon conversion efficiency around 400 watts. At one point in the middle 70s, they, d they developed a single crystal artificial sapphire tube for high pressure sodium. And it had improved efficiency, but it was so expensive, they switched back to polycrystal, polycrystalline aluminum tubes. And that's what we see here. Now, inside the reflector housing, I put a ceramic base, and you can see it's rated for up to 150-watt lamp. 
and the bulb itself has its declaration right there, S62, 70 watt. Now we're just going to um, fly around with the camera here and take a close look at the bulb. And that thing in the middle on the wire is called a getter, so as sodium leaks out, it sticks to the getter instead of depositing on the inside of the quartz glass envelope. And that maintains clarity of the external envelope, improving luminous efficiency over time. If that getter wasn't in there, sodium would slowly sputter deposit by ion migration through the aluminum tube during high temperature operation, and it would um, coat the it would coat the the wall of the fixture or of the the bulb envelope, uh, and that would darken the the glass, reducing photon emission. And the whole point of a light source, artificial lighting is to convert electrical power current flow into photon emissions, namely because our eyes receive photons bouncing off external surfaces, and then those photons hit the retina and the fovea in the eye and transmit signals to our brain so we can make sense of the imaging that our brain performs on sensor signals from our eyes uh, to see or to have vision. And vision is the most powerful sense because it works at great distance with great precision.